Every year, there is a lot on the line for NBA players, no matter their stature around the league. The stars are trying to cement their legacies, vying for the most prominent awards and recognitions, while also trying to lead their teams to winning seasons. The teams as a whole are trying to compete for a championship, role players are trying to prove they can be impactful in those roles, and then on the other end of the spectrum, there are quite a few young players still trying to find their footing at this level, and that brings us to to today's video. Today we'll be discussing four young NBA players in particular that have a few seasons under their belt already, but to this point have not come anywhere close to living up to the hype, and are now on the verge of being labeled busts if they don't turn things around soon. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoyed the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first player we'll be discussing today that's on the verge of becoming a bust this season is Killian Hayes of the Brooklyn Nets. Hayes, in many eyes, is already labeled a bust, but he's included on the list today because he's in a new situation where he will be given a chance to turn things around for himself. He was the seventh pick back in the 2020 NBA Draft by the Detroit Pistons, and came into the league with pretty lofty expectations as a creative ball handler who seemed like he could be a floor general to build around, but that has just never Never even come close to happening, unfortunately. Despite clinging to his starting role for most of the four years that Hayes spent in Detroit, improvement individually has been minimal at best. The Pistons by no means have been a good team over the last four years, but with Hayes on the court every season, the offense has cratered even further, being an average of five points worse per 100 possessions with him on the court, and a lot of it came down to the fact that he was never able to figure out how to be an effective scorer. Hayes was actually one of the Pistons' best finishers in the paint last season percentage-wise, but those numbers tanked the second he tried to put up a shot from five feet and beyond, and his career-long struggles from three, having never converted over 30% of his shots from deep for a season, ever, made it too tough to keep him as a part of the team's plans. Now that he's in Brooklyn, it's probably the best place for him to have a quote-unquote last chance, because he should have the backup point guard job solidified, and the team is expected to be one of the worst teams in the NBA this year. There's no pressure, no expectations, and nothing to lose there, so if he still can't take a leap this season, then he may find himself playing overseas. The next player on the verge of solidifying himself as a bust this season is Moses Moody of the Golden State Warriors. This one hurts me to discuss because I remember being very high on Moody on draft night back in 2021 when he was a lottery pick and going to the Golden State Warriors inspired confidence in his ability to develop in a competitive environment as a supposed 3 and D player in the making. That's the role he was drafted to play and with his physical tools, his skill profile, and his collegiate playstyle, it was easy to see why so many scouts were excited about him becoming an effective two-way wing, but his NBA journey, three years in, has been a lot less inspiring than anticipated. His role in the team's rotation during his first two years was very minimal, and then last year he put up a career-high eight points per game while still struggling to solidify himself in a consistent role in the team's rotation. It's hard to even say he's been bad either, shooting the ball with league average efficiency, but the reason why he has not been able to gain Coach Steve Kerr's trust, in Kerr's own words, is because Moody's decision-making on both ends needs to improve, he needs to make quicker decisions, he has to make quicker rotations defensively, and Kerr wants him to take quicker shots just in general. Basically, he's saying that Moody doesn't play with much confidence and is not decisive enough. It also hurts his stock to see that Brandon Pajemski on the Warriors came in as a rookie last year and immediately succeeded in the role that Moody was supposed to be playing by now, and after signing DeAnthony Melton and Buddy Heald in the offseason, the road to minutes this year for Moody is becoming even harder for him. 
The next player on the verge of busting this season is Davion Mitchell of the Toronto Raptors. Davion Mitchell was riding a high when he was drafted in the top 10 by the Sacramento Kings back in 2021 after a dominant run in March Madness that year, leading his Baylor squad to the title, but his NBA journey has been trending in the wrong direction three years in a row. In his rookie season, he was playing a lot off the bench because the Kings were trying to maximize his elite on-ball defensive talent, which admittedly is still pretty top tier to this day. Unfortunately though, pretty much the entire rest of Mitchell's game has been wildly inconsistent, and that's why he has seen his role shrink in each of the last two seasons, with his scoring output decreasing every year as well. He's been average to below average as a perimeter shooter, he's struggled in facilitating roles, and he even makes some unfortunate mistakes with his off-ball defense sometimes, falling asleep when his man doesn't have the ball. Scoring just five points per game in each of the last two seasons certainly is not doing himself any favors either. In the NBA, being an elite defender will definitely help convince teams to give you chances, but it's not enough to solidify your role unless you can find ways to impact the offensive end in some capacity too, and Mitchell is still trying to find ways to do that more consistently. There is good news though because now that he's a Raptor, the team's coaching staff are already speaking very encouragingly about trying their best to get the most out of him. They've been vocal about their focus of the team philosophy being to play stout perimeter defense first and foremost, and Mitchell will be a big part of that. But their head coach has spoken about how he's encouraging Mitchell to play freely, taking shots that come to him, and working more in the pick and roll finding his teammates for this upcoming season, so the opportunities are going to be there, but it's up to Mitchell now to show everyone that he's up for the challenge, otherwise his time in the league may run out. The next player on the verge of reaching bust status this season is Dyson Daniels of the Atlanta Hawks. Daniels is actually incredibly similar to Davion Mitchell in that they both provide the same top tier perimeter defensive effort already at such a young age, but also like Mitchell, his offensive game needs a lot of work. Daniels came into the league as a top 10 pick in 2022 by the New Orleans Pelicans after playing a year for the G League Ignite program, and what he was as a prospect was a well-rounded two-way guard that hounded opposing ball handlers and showed off a high basketball IQ with his decision-making and secondary playmaking ability. The holdup on his NBA career taking off is the fact that he's not anywhere close to being an effective enough offensive player to unlock his true strengths. Defenses more often than not treat him as a non-factor because he's just a 31% shooter from three that takes only two attempts from deep per game, and that shrinks the floor a ton for not only himself, but also his teammates. He's also not a strong enough ball handler yet to create space for himself or put constant pressure on defenses, and that's an area he needs to improve upon in order to unlock his playmaking talent, which is there. In Atlanta, it helps that he'll be playing alongside Trey Young's elite playmaking talent and will be needed to provide some much needed defense in that backcourt, but his leash could tighten if his shooting continues to evade him. With Daniels, there's very clearly a smart basketball player there, he just needs to improve on the pretty glaring limitations that are currently holding him back from reaching his potential, and while I believe in his ability to figure it out, the clock is ticking for him to actually do so. And finally, the last player we'll be discussing today on the verge of busting this season is Johnny Davis of the Washington Wizards. Davis is probably the biggest non-factor of a player discussed in the entire video, and the fact that many of you watching right now likely completely forgot about him until this moment speaks to that. Davis was the 10th pick in the 2022 NBA Draft, and the appeal with his game was, funnily enough, the fact that he was viewed as one of the most complete scoring talents in the class. The reason why that's funny is because since his arrival at the NBA level the last two years, he has been, bar none, one of the worst scorers in the entire league, and the Wizards haven't been able to confidently give him a consistent role in their rotation because of it, despite being such a bad team with all the motivation in the world to want to make it work with him. Davis has spent a lot of time down in the G League over the last two years, and what's most worrying of all is that he hasn't even been playing that well at the G League 
League level, so if he's barely even an average player down there, the odds of him becoming a reliable scoring threat at the NBA level seems almost impossible. In the G League, Davis averaged 8 points, shooting an abysmal 36% from the field and 21% from 3 as a rookie, and then last season, he slightly improved down in the G League, averaging 12 points, shooting 40% from the field and 31% from 3, but it's still pretty bad considering the level of competition and the capital that the Wizards invested in him. With players like Bilal Koulibaly, Corey Kispert, Jordan Poole, Bub Carrington, and Malcolm Brogdon all being ahead of him on the depth chart for the Wizards' backcourt, he's running out of time quickly to make it work, too. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about these young players moving forward. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.